Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I bless God for this opportunity to bring his truth to you. Now, are you ready? Let's call forth our daily bread right now. Praise God. Are you ready to say this with me? Say, Father, give me today my daily bread. I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I'm telling you, a miracle is coming to you today. Yep, a miracle is coming to you today. Now we'll be receiving testimonies of, of how, I mean, people are getting convinced more and more that, look, God is the one who meets my need. And coupled with the launch hour prayer meeting we've been having, lots of testimonies, praise God. And if you've not joined the launch hour prayer meeting, come on now. Join today, praise God. Join today and, and let God begin to do marvelous things in your life. Praise God. Let's go into today's teachings. Father, we bless you. Holy Spirit, you are the one sent to guide us into all truth. And we believe you. So I know today burdens are being lifted right now. Yokes are being destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, I began to share with you yesterday about things concerning our salvation. And we're reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 14. Now, we, we stopped at verse 16 yesterday and I was explaining some very important things to you concerning Jesus and John. Because Paul said in verse 16, he says, Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh now this has been the limitation of many people you know sometimes say ah i know that pastor now ah he grew up on in our street ah very well ah i know him i used to go to his house and then you still use that eye to relate even though you are born again today but you still use that eye to relate with the person now i was explaining something to you yesterday i said john the baptist was anointed from the womb he was filled with the Holy Ghost from the mother's womb. So imagine how he grew up. Just, just try to imagine that. Praise God. And then, but he didn't know. The Holy Spirit didn't tell him. What does that mean? The Holy Spirit will not tell you everything. Now, you can probe. See, you can probe and then, depends on how you approach him, he can tell you a lot of things. But still, he won't tell you everything. Now, if, you, if you're used to working with the Holy Spirit, you always, you know, get this thing about, ha, ah, Lord, why didn't you tell me about this? And I know even the answer he will give you, make it like, well, okay, no problem, praise God. Yeah, I'm telling you the truth. Because he can't tell you everything. Sometimes people go and fast and pray, oh, Lord, reveal everything about my life. Oh! How? In one day fasting and prayer. Even 21 days fasting and prayer. How? He will show you some things. He will show you where you're going. He'll show you where you're headed for. But you see, because it is by faith that you're going to walk in all those things, then he will tell you everything. So John was expected to know Jesus by faith not because he was his cousin. So, only God, you know, because see, the fact that a man is anointed doesn't mean he loses his mind. He decides to let his mind control his thoughts at any point. That a man is born again or, or, or that a man is anointed doesn't mean from that day, the man will only be operated by the anointing. He can never operate. No, no. It's always his choice to switch. And that's one thing you need to understand. That's the mistake people make. So because someone operated in the anointing yesterday, 
you now think today the person must be walking under the anointing. And many people have been led astray because of this. Now, now not, not because the people of the people trying to lead them astray, it's because they themselves lack understanding of how God works. So the fact that John was filled with the Holy Ghost from the womb, they didn't mean he didn't make mistakes. Number one, he didn't know Jesus until Jesus came to his baptism. Then, because God had given him a sign. And when he saw that sign, and you know how you see that sign and then you look at the fellow standing before you, ah, you, you are the one, all these, wow. I mean, even if I'm the one, it, it will send me into a time of deep reflection and thought. I mean, my cousin was the Christ. All this while, how come I didn't know? I will question a lot of things about myself. I'm telling you the truth. Not that I'll condemn myself, but it will, it will get me to, first of all, ask myself a lot of questions. Have I truly been fellowshipping right? How come he never told me? But in this case, it is supposed to be until the time of his revelation. So there are certain things that are kept secret until the time. No matter how you pray about it, it will not be revealed to you. And that's, for example, the coming, uh, the, the, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, you know, they, they ask Jesus, the disciples ask Jesus. <laughs> they said, would you at this time, restore the kingdom because they, they, they knew Jesus was coming back. They knew. So they felt he was going to do something when he rose from there. He didn't. And then he starts talking about, I'm going, I'm going. He said, okay, but I'll come back. So wait, when you come back now, would you? He said, it is not for you to know the seasons that the God has put in his own power. So sometimes, you know, no matter how anointed you are, you may not even know the next person yet that God is going to anoint you. Can, you may not know. You may try to guess, but you cannot really tell because God can hide those things. Praise God. So, he says, Wherefore, verse 16, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, verse 17 now, if any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. I want you to follow now. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, he was setting the foundation for what he was going to drop right here. He says, listen, we don't know any man after the flesh. Why? Because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. So if you think you know that man after the flesh, then you are going to be making a big mistake for your life. If you are going to judge him by what you have known him to be after the flesh, whether good or bad, you are going to be making a big mistake for your life. So when we got saved, when we got born again, hear me, we became new creatures. Now I want you to get something here. When he meant new creature. Now, you know, many times we use what he said next to qualify the new creation. So he says, all things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. Notice it didn't say if any man be in Christ, he is a new person. There is a reason the translators use the word creature. They didn't use person because it would have been simpler to say, look, when you get born again, now you're now a new person, you know. So God has wiped away all your sins, so you are now brand new. That's what a lot of people think. Now, because of this statement made here that all things are passed away and behold, all things are now become new. So they, they feel the, the word new creature is talking about this guy was a bad guy. He was dirty. Now he's clean. So now he's brand new. The same way you take your car to um, the, the auto shop and then they'll finish working on it and then they spray it 
a new color, maybe the same color, and then you see that guy say, man, this car is brand new, <laughs> praise God. Yeah, you know, that's not what he's referring to here. When he said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He actually means a new creature. And I'm going to be explaining these things to you so you will understand. How is he a new creature? I will tell you. See, when God created man, see, John was trying to say this also in John chapter 1 from verse 12. Say, for as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them who believe in his name, which were born. He says, they were not born of blood, nor of the will of man, nor of the will of the flesh, but of God. See, he said, they were not born of the flesh. They were not born of the will of man. They were not born of blood. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, what does Paul mean by a new creature? Because when man was created, he was made a living soul. I want you to understand this. Who is a living soul? A living soul is not, you know, people make this mistake of saying uh, man is a spirit. He has a soul and he lives in a body. Not every man. It's only the new creation that is a spirit having a soul living in a body. Before you got born again, you were simply a living soul. Understand it? You were simply a living soul, having not the Spirit. The Spirit in us is not different from the Holy Spirit. Now, this might be too high for you know, someone what are you trying to say? No, think about it. You know, people just have this mentality that we have a spirit in us and then we have our soul. And then we live in a body. So when you get born again, what what happened? Your spirit was what recreated. Can a spirit be recreated? Think about it. Sometimes we listen without thinking, and that's why people deceive us. Or sometimes people lead us into error by their own error. So can a spirit be recreated? Now that's why you get to that point. Say, look, nothing is impossible with God. So no, 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 no. Can a spirit? be recreated. Ah, praise God. So what's he saying? When you got born again, the Spirit of God came into you. Now, why did the Spirit of God come into you? Because this was God's plan from the foundation of the world. I want you to understand something. This is the reason that this had to wait until Jesus came. Why? Because from the foundation of the world, even before Adam was formed, God had planned that it is Jesus that will bring man into life. So Jesus had a ministry before Adam was formed or created. Now, these, these things are simple when you study and understand even the scriptures. But of course, you cannot even understand the scriptures without the Holy Spirit. So yeah, it's simple when you have the Holy Spirit and you let him guide you. So people just think that Jesus came because of the account of man's sin. No, he didn't come because of the account of man's sin. If you say he came because of the account of man's sin, then you are nullifying what the Bible says, you know, when the Bible calls him the lamb that was slain before the foundation or from the foundation of the world. You are now saying that, see, this is why people get confused. People say, oh, it, it, God knew Adam was going to fail. So he had already created a backup plan, you know, for Adam's failure. So everything, so think about it. So God created man, said, don't eat of the fruit. He knew they were going to eat of the fruit. So now, don't eat of this fruit, too. don't eat. So why, why tell them not to eat of the fruit in the first place? Why tell them a, to keep a command that you have already orchestrated them to break? That looks like God is playing games with everybody, doesn't it? So God said, don't eat of the fruit. Then he now gave him a woman that will now deceive him to eat. Allow the serpents to go in there and tempt them. 
Nah, praise God. So, so then why did the Bible say the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world? Yes, because it was ordained in the scheme of things that man was going to be in the image and likeness of God. That is what God said in Genesis chapter 1. But in Genesis chapter 2, when they were created, they were not in the image and likeness of God. Not because God changed his mind. No, they were not yet in the image and likeness of God. They were going to be eventually. When Now, how were they going to be? Because God has designed that a man called Jesus will be born into this world and he is the one that was going to give man life. I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> because our time is up for today. Sometimes you just wish you can preach this thing, you know, and, and just... But the Lord will help us. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Step out today with victory in your heart because you are a new creature. God bless you. Bye-bye.